it's difficult to define Natasha Rusli's role on the industry because it could be too many roles at the same time, right? Absolutely, yeah. But you know, it, it's kind of fun to do um, work that is so versatile, and you're not stuck with one specific thing like programming or art or anything like that. So that's fun. <laughs> But you're showing one main game today from Rock Pocket Games, which is called Oliver and Spike, uh, which is the main feature of the game. Um, well, it's a dimension jumping, um, which it sounds like if I say dimension jumping, so every, like everyone goes like, oh, it's Quantum Conundrum, Montana Sisters, something like that. Um, fact is, we've been working on it since 2010. The whole concept, that's the first, or even 2009, if I remember correctly, but that's the first time we pitched it to the Norwegian Film Institute for funding. And um, what it is all about is the fact, of course, it is about dimension switching. Uh, each world you play on has at least three parallel dimensions. But um, the difference is that all those dimensions are also completely explorable. I mean, you can stay on them how long you like. In some cases, there is uh, an exception with Aqual, which is completely submerged in water. So at the beginning, you're, of course, limited by the amount of air. Uh, you can only stay on the water until you run out of air. Um, that changes later on, though. Um, I think that's the main difference between other games who do use dimension switching. Um, also, obviously, the dimensions have different, difficult, uh, different physical laws, so lower gravity, uh, like I said, on submerged in water, and all those are used in puzzles and, and, and quests and boss fights and things like that, uh, up to nine different dimensions. So it's not a uh, 2D adventure game, 3D adventure game. It's like a 90D yeah. adventure game, right? <laughs> yeah, it goes all. It goes like all sides, up and down, and and yeah, 3D. So yeah, we're trying to to use every angle, literally. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's exciting to work that way. It's it's very ambitious as well, but uh, yeah, we're trying to to push the limits. Okay, getting back to your work, um, um, you've been on the artistic side of things, also on marketing, communication. How do you? mix that up and what do you take from each field? Um, well, um, if I do one, f right now I'm basically doing what no one else wants to do, which is marketing and business development and, and PR. Uh, well, not that I don't want to do PR, <laughs> I have to say that. No, but um, it's I concentrate on that right now. So it's not like I do everything like mixed with each other. So it's it, it comes in like um, little parts so sometimes I, I I do some freelance work like artistic as well or um, I work mostly for the company and I was mostly on marketing business development uh, but also design in terms of level design or, or high designs for specific platforms things like that I find it amazing because you never get bored so you're not just doing marketing statistics all the time or so you have we can switch it up a little bit yeah and getting getting to know the other side is also useful for marketing i guess absolutely absolutely uh also i mean if you understand a little bit of programming if you if you do understand uh graphics uh if you're gaming yourself i think it's brilliant that i mean i'm not really versatile in all the fields or like super versatile or super knowledgeable in all the fields but uh, it's definitely a really great advantage to be able to to um, have information from all those fields and personal experience, I think, anyway. <laughs> what about the MMO field, the uh, online community field for you? Um, what I got mostly from there is how important communities are. Um, what I didn't like that much is you com you were completely different because you have bigger teams and it's much harder to communicate and manage. And also the, the scope of the project is much, much bigger, much more risky. So you have much more pressure on specific areas as well. Um, so there's a big difference between the development for smaller projects or like a huge project like an MMO. But like I said, I think the biggest uh, takeaway I got from working in the MMO field is, is really how important communities are and how important it is or how valuable they are and how important it is to treat them well, to really make them sure you know that you appreciate them. Uh, because it's really easy to, to get that wrong. And that's that's not only true for a big game, that's also true for, for a game like Oliver and Spike or or even for a mobile game. Because you really want to make sure you know that or you're your, your, I, I don't like to say customers, I like to say your community or your fans even, that they know that you really appreciate them and that let them know every day and, and I think that's something that I really learned for the MMO industry. Nice concept. Um, apart from Oliver and Spike, what's uh, Rock Pocket Games into right now? 
Yeah, um, we're also working on Shiftlings. That's uh, a game we actually made in three days. We won the Norwegian game competition, developer uh, game developer competition with that one earlier this year. Um, uh, the theme was, it was kind of a jam, and the theme was Size Matters, so we made this humorous uh, game with two characters, like two aliens, and they're connected with a tube, and you can switch the size between them, so one gets like super big and wobbly, and the other guy gets small. And you can play that either single or uh, with a friend, single player or with a friend. And uh, it's basically a pure puzzle platformer. Uh, but it's very funny because um, if you play it yourself, you can switch between or you can choose which character you play and then you can switch sizes yourself as well. But if you play with someone else, then like um, you play one character, I play the other. But you can switch the size, both of, of us can switch the size at any time. So that ends up being like very confusing and, and, and funny because people f start fighting about, no, I'm going to switch and I do, you're going to switch. and. So that's actually, uh, it's like we had a lot of fun showcasing that uh, in, in Norway. Um, that's actually pretty much done. We are going to make some a few more levels and then see if we can find a publisher for it. And then uh, we're probably also going to hopefully have a, uh, maybe a few levels for free to, to try very soon. And then we have a project called Game Tracer, which is for mobile. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Shifting is for all platforms. It will be mobile, we are uh, console, PC. Linux maybe as well, Mac, so we can do that for all platforms. And then we have Game Tracer, which is mobile only, and uh, social, Facebook, or like a uh, web. And that's actually a tool, it's a mix between a game and a tool, where you can really easily create your own platform games, just by drawing shapes on your tablet, for example, and it creates them in, in fake 3D. You can even, like completely freehand, you don't, you're, you're not pixel uh, limited or anything. So you just draw a shape and you can, you can rotate and, and flip and, and move it around and make another one and use textures or themes. You have different themes like sci-fi or pretty or scary, things like that. Um, you can make it very simple or very complex. You have even logics you can add and schematics and doors and enemies and buttons and so you can make... Yeah, we have a guy that made a, a seven bit calculator with, with the <laughs> logic, so it was an insane. But the idea is you make that and then you press a button and it creates a level for you and you can easily share that with a friend and then your friend can play that game as well. So sounds like uh, really original gameplay ideas. And what about the technical side of things? I guess uh, uh, Unity has been really important for you, for your studio. Yeah, absolutely. We've been working with Unity since 2008 and we absolutely love it. I don't, we, w we wouldn't change it for anything because um, I think the, the, the strongest point of Unity development is that if you compare it with other engines, you have an amazing base that you can really start from and then build on top of it because we have lots of in-house tools that we build ourselves that make it make it very efficient for us to develop and it makes it for example we have our own platform kit which we call it uh, which enables us to to create 2d side scrolling platform games like super easily like super fast as well um, but like i said you have a great base with unity and you can build on that where with other engines you basically have to strip them down first to be able to get to your level and then build up again so that's i think that's one of the strongest points and the fact that you can you can have a prototype ready so incredibly fast have an idea and even if you're not, not like of course you, you need to know programming but um you don't have to i can do uh, things in unity so i don't you don't have to be like a full-fledged programmer to do depending on the scope of your game obviously if you try to do Assassin's Creed then you're gonna not gonna get that very far but uh, I think that's all that's the strength of unity and also how approachable it is for for small developers because the the, the the normal license is free so everyone can basically play around with it okay just a closing one um, which is the concept behind uh, advert games it's something I, I found at the uh, rock pocket games uh, website yeah, we um, when we don't do our own IPs or games, we actually work with other games, uh, with um, ad agencies or directly with companies. And those are mobile games mostly or also Facebook social games that um, are produced to uh, promote a brand or a company or a product uh, or either a community if you want to have a specific message out there. So, um, for example, we made Mr. Milk Winter Games for the biggest diary brand in, in Norway for uh, Tina Milk, together with Hyper uh, Interactive, uh, which is basically done to promote their main character, which is Mr. Milk. This is the spokesperson of Tina. He's like the, the old spice guy of, Nor of Norway, I'd like to call him. He's a very over-the-top uh, character that everyone in Norway knows. He's an actual actor. So we made this 3D version of him and made the snowboard uh, and skiing game 
for mobile for for uh, iPhone and and Android and um, and tablets as well and um, th this is basically to promote the, the um, like I said the spokesperson and the brand to be cool like branding it as like a cool thing to do like it's cool to drink milk because Mr. Milk is cool is snowboarding and things like that and um, it's it's something that we use to fund our own IPs. So we do basically work for hire in that area and work with companies. Uh, we've also done a racing game for Madcon, uh, the Norwegian band. They just released a single, a new single like a uh, like month, two months ago. And we basically made both singers in 3D and made this mosquito racing game, which is also a tie-in with the video that came out with the single. So it's basically to promote products or people and yeah. Yeah, it's like vice versa. It's not just promoting your own games, but games for promoting all thi all yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a, it's an amazing tool to use in a marketing uh, in a marketing package, because people I've, uh, the, the numbers we had we were looking at for uh, Mr. Milk were amazing. It's like it was downloaded like two hundred thousand times within the first twenty days, I think, over two hundred thousand times, but only in Norway, and um, the amount of times people were engaged with the game was just insane. It's like years overall during those it's like years of people being engaged with that specific actor person like for that brand so if you look at that and compare it to like tv ads or anything it's it's much better to actually use a game in in advertising because people can people have time on the train or or, or when they're waiting on a bus or or if they're at home and they're there th your brand is in front of their in front of their uh their eyes all the time uh compared to like a tv ad that might run like 30 seconds and they're not there they're on the on, on the toilet or somewhere else so it's an amazing tool to sell products or, or just yeah even build communities okay thank you natasha for your time and good luck with all those interesting and different very different projects yeah, thank you thank you very much